Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here are your hosts. John Furrier. And back everyone, we are live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent, this is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Dude Miniman. Our next guest is from CA Technologies. We have Umar Khan, Principal Product Marketing Manager, and Raj Sundaram, Director of Product Management, CA Technology, Hybrid Cloud. You guys are DevOps guys, so this is, <laughs> this is a show for you guys. Welcome <laughs> to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you here. so much, super excited to be here. So, Stu and I are both closet, cloudarati, DevOps guys. Back in when DevOps was not the fashionable thing. It was a small community that grew, now it's full cloud, gone mainstream. DevOps is now the way, the new normal. What do you guys see in, within CA? What, how are you guys organized and what are you guys doing specifically? Just take a minute to explain what you guys are doing in the hybrid, the DevOps, the infrastructure side of it. No, no absolutely. So, uh, so at CA we are part of the DevOps business unit and as part of the sub-unit, sub we, what we do is we're part of the agile infrastructure manager business unit, so covering uh, your networks, your infrastructure, your applications across hybrid IT, hybrid cloud, be it traditional infrastructure or the newer cloud, modern-based infrastructure as well, providing you single set of solutions across networks, applications, and infrastructures as well. How do you describe hybrid IT versus hybrid cloud? What's the difference? So, so I think a lot of people have different definitions <laughs> of the term, but I think traditionally hybrid IT means mixture of cloud versus traditional and hybrid cloud could be your private cloud, which is on-prem too at times, and a mixture of public cloud as well. But what we are hearing more and more these days is the term multi-cloud as well, right? So it's, people used to say hybrid cloud a lot more, now people are saying we are multi-cloud, right? So, so yeah. what are customers talking to you guys about? Because one of the things that we're hearing more and more, obviously the sassification of business, that's, that's pretty no-brainer. But in the cloud world, platform as a service, infrastructure, service, those are kind of moving real fast. You're seeing things like containers and Kubernetes at the top and bottom below. This is kind of a foggy area for customers as they try to figure out and squint through. What are you seeing for the customers' um, needs? What's their requirements for really operating without disruption? Yeah. In moving to the cloud, dealing with either true private cloud, or just having that environment? What's some of the requirements? So, so I think one of the key challenges customers face is uh, the, the, usually the development teams want to adopt the newer modern technologies like cloud-based infrastructures, uh, container-based technologies, Docker is a pre, pre, pretty prominent one as well. Uh, but then the op side is trying to catch up with the rest of the stuff too, right? Uh, they want to adopt the modern infrastructure, but there's a lot of legacy infrastructure, especially in the, in the enterprise side that they cannot move right now. So what they need to do is track end-to-end experience and use a unified tool set that supports their legacy traditional infrastructure and at the same time supports newer, uh, newer technology as well, be it Amazon, be it uh, Dockers, containers, on-prem, off-prem and getting that consistent experience across these different technologies. Raj, we listened to Andy Jassy this morning lay out just a huge number of new features, everything from new compute to you know, the new hybrid models we were talking about, which is, you, know, you want to do VMware in the cloud? Sure, you want to do serverless on the edge? That's great. Uh, talk to about kind of how you guys fit into the AWS uh, par you know, uh, partnership, uh, you know, what products you have, what Amazon services you work with, um, is the, um, you know, everybody's got kind of the, the areas that you partner with, the areas that you might compete with, and you know, who knows tomorrow Amazon might announce something that competes against everyone here. So, you know, t t tell us where you fit. Absolutely, so that, that's a great question. I think uh, Umer alluded to this, most of, the, most of our customers today, uh, they are in the lift and shift phase of uh, cloud migration. So they have a very heavy investment on on-prem uh, capabilities and they look into the cloud to essentially look at next generation use cases, right? One of the challenges is having a tool that, that spans uh, that hybrid environment so that they can have better visibility uh, for an, uh, with an end-to-end, -end, from an end-to-end -end perspective, and that's where UIM fits in. We have a very comprehensive uh, AWS monitoring capability. We have had that for a few years. Uh, back in June, we added uh, support for more services um, Umair also mentioned uh, Docker and other capabilities as well. So essentially, providing visibility to their entire ecosystem uh, is something that our customers uh, desire and that is something UIM uh, has strengths in. Okay. Um, great, so, you know, where, where the, that, that dynamic, we talked about hybrid cloud versus multi-cloud. Um, 
Amazon has a slightly different view of it. Uh, they, they talked about how, you know, if you want buying power, you should be do, doing, uh, you know, most of your work uh, with them. Uh, we, we've seen the maturation of hybrid cloud. Uh, maybe can, can you dig into what, what are you seeing from customers? Is it, you know, we, we said there's, there's my on-prem stuff, there's SaaS, uh, there's public clouds. Uh, people are doing things in all of those buckets, but especially, you know, public clouds, you know, What's the strategy you're seeing uh, from your customers? What do you hear from them as they try to sort out this hybrid multi-cloud world? So I think, uh, you know, let me take some specific use cases here, right? We have a, a large pharma customer uh, who has uh, traditionally had a very large on-prem uh, set of capabilities and they're looking to move their entire workload uh, to AWS. So they started small, uh, experimented, uh, characterized workloads both on-prem and in the cloud using UIM uh, to make sure that their end user SLAs uh, they would be able to able uh, able to meet and once that experiment was successful they have since then scaled their uh, migration uh, using uh, Amazon's partner network but their management tool of choice was able to give them that perspective that you know whatever they did in their past with with the uh, on-prem model they would still be able to meet their end user SLAs when they move to the cloud. Um, so that's one specific use case. We have other customers who, uh, you know, Andy talked about uh, DR this morning, um, use the cloud for uh, disaster recovery uh, sort of use cases. So they have uh, their hot data resident on-prem, but uh, any archival data they would, uh, they would place in the cloud as well. So that, that's a third use case. I want to get you guys thoughts, because you guys are in the enterprise market pretty deep a lot of customers, um, some are unhappy, some are happy further along, progress bar of the, uh, the different versions of who's further along on cloud. But one of the things that's consistent is the APIs um, are going to be big in the cloud. And, and much people would rather sling APIs between services that might not be something that they have to build. So there's kind of like this app development, agile, DevOps, next generation app development framework where it's like, hey, I'm just going to use that service why build it? That re relies a lot on APIs. What, your, what are your thoughts? What are you guys doing in this area? Because this becomes part of a lot of that crossover between DevOps and app development. Your thoughts on what you guys do there with customers and, and value proposition around how that's yeah. developing. So, so we have a lot of API management tool set as well uh, in the broader CA portfolio. But when you're talking about a APIs and integration of services, then you, uh, what, what as a business unit we really help you is, is throughout the application lifecycle, going from dev to test to deployment, we have the right tool set providing in, insights into code level, into the infrastructure you run on it, be it Docker, be it Amazon, be it on-prem infrastructure. So as you move to the different application lifecycles, from a performance management point of view, you can monitor across all of these through our holistic portfolio. And it's really important in DevOps. I know DevOps is all about speed, but it's also about quality. It's, it's equally yeah. as challenging ensuring the number of bugs, the earlier you catch them, like Raj mentioned, the, on the left shift, the, the earlier you catch them, the better your application and infrastructure uh, performance would be. It's a lot well. harder to do DevOps in the enterprise because there's some other constraints. Exactly, <laughs> right. And, and what the, are some of the top ones that you, you bump into that you guys are working to solve through that help customers with? Sorry. But that's, what's, what's different inside the enterprise versus a cloud native DevOps? Yeah. Cloud native, pretty much a green field in the enterprise. What are some of the key challenges that customers are having that you're working I, on? I, I think it's dealing with the traditional infrastructure and the, the on-prem as well, right? Imagine you, you're a bank and you just developed a banking application. You might, the app might log in and touch a cloud server, but once the balance is, let's say, updated, it might go all the way back to a transaction has to be updated to a compliance system on a mainframe, right? The, again, the chain, end-to-end -end chain, crosses cloud, crosses traditional, even all the way to mainframe at times. You, you, you need to make sure that if any of those components fail, that means the customer experience suffers. And customer experience is everything in today's app. So a lot more project. engineering to go into that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. The, the other challenge is you know, the increased complexity when you move into a cloud environment, right? Just because you can, uh, um, you know, the elasticity and the scale um, also adds to um, the, the complexity and the general lack of visibility, right? So customers want a, that level of control uh, regardless of whether it's an on-prem or in the cloud environment. And that's what... Uh, so you're uh, saying cloud is more complex 
or from, not? From a, from, a, from a visibility standpoint, okay. from an operation. From a management standpoint. From a management standpoint. And okay. that's, you know, one of uh, Amazon's uh, AWS's thought leaders uh, had identified uh, lack of management tools as being a key barrier to cloud adoption, right? A lot of, a lot of customers hesitate yeah. because they don't have, they believe that there's a general lack of control when they move from on-prem to, to the yeah, cloud. Yes, Stu and I were just talking about this earlier this morning before we went on camera. Management is key to get the data. Agile's premise is data-driven exactly. in management. Correct. So management's number one issue. And, it, and plus, IT guys love the single plane and pane of glass. Absolutely. They want to have that control. John, 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 come on. The enterprise says the single pane of glass is spelled P-A-I-N. <laughs> so, so, you know, we'd love to have, you know, some simplified tools out that, but. I was talking to a VC last night uh, at one of the VC parties. I want to get your thoughts on this, because this kind of comes down to the thought. Um, I said, hey, how's your investments doing in infrastructure? He rolled his eyes, you know, not too good. But he says that the plumbers are turning into machinists, meaning plumbers being, you know, the guys provisioning yeah. networks and whatnot. But his point is, it's shifting the core competency back to right. what the management requirement is. They don't mind not, they kind of want to still be plumbers, or whatever, but the job is merely pushing buttons, looking at what's available. That comes back down to what the cloud trend is. Do you guys agree with that? The plumbers are turning into machinists? No, no absolutely. Even the tools that we develop for them, the expectations from them a lot more, right? Like our unified infrastructure management, we're evolving the product to go beyond performance to experience to more predictive insight. Just like I gave an example of cars of today versus tomorrow. Uh, cars used to sell on safety and other features. Now they talk about the dashboarding, the automatic collision detection. So now the, predict, the newer tools that the newer uh, admins of the future will require would be more predictive analytics, more predictive yeah. insights, more proactive issue resolution than the old tools that just told you when things went down. Now they have to predictively. A lot of mundane work involved in some of the older techniques. Exactly, exactly. Kind of just, boring. Yeah, <laughs> so, so you know, we, we've been the last few years getting our arms around some of those you know, analytics applications. Today, you know, you throw in, you know, the artificial intelligence, the machine learning, all the IoT stuff. I mean, that that's got to, you know, add orders of magnitude more complexity as some of the stuff you're doing. H how are you guys, you know, looking at that space? Uh, you know, what what opportunities and are there? You want to talk about? So the the sheer uh, amount of data that is being generated these days. Um, I think mandates the need for a machine learning approach to uh, to help resolve uh, or or triage any um, end user experience issues, if you will, right? So I think the, the, one of the key takeaways from this conference was it's all about end user experiences and that's what we are all about as well. How do you, how do you go from an end user experience all the way to code to infrastructure performance? Um, and there's so much data that is being generated, manually tagging and making sense of the data is a, is a thing of the past. So we are actively investing in um, machine learning based, based approaches to uh, shortening the loop, if you will, from, uh, um, you know, from a problem standpoint, reducing the MTTR, but also predictively uh, uh, alerting end users that these, well, because it, of infrastructure the Machine issues. learning really accelerates predictive, Absolutely. but also yeah. really puts prescriptive right. analytics on the table, exactly. big time. Yep. Absolutely. You guys see that too? No, absolutely. That, that, that's, the, uh, that's what customers ask us as well, right? They don't <laughs> want to, they want to work on more, more on the dev side. Even, even, even the traditional system administrators want, want to support application development, deployments more. They don't want to do traditional monitoring, right? So they want to be, so the more automation, predictive insights you have, the less time they'll spend doing the day-to-day -day management stuff and more time on more yep. value-creating innovation uh, type of applications. Well guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I asked the final question is, what's your big walk away from the show this year um, that you're going to take back to the ranch and tell all your colleagues the aha moment was? <laughs> I think my is all about AI, right? It's how it's, it's, how it's finally here and how Amazon has added AI capabilities as well to its stack, making it more and more easier to consume as well. I think that's a big thing for us, adding that across our portfolio, adding more analytics, so we can help our end customer drive a better user experience as well. Raj, any thoughts? And, and for me, there were, uh, you know, it wasn't one specific thing, a lot of small things, if you will, but the sheer pace of innovation, you know, going from the last time, last reinvent to this one, it's staggering. And uh, I think one of the key points here that they made was, uh, you know, uh, companies have to adapt or, you know, uh, be left behind. So that, that to me is- Well, I echo point. your comments, <laughs> pun intended. Um, you guys get your free echoes yet? The, yeah. Your, this yeah. Swag? Okay. Yeah. All right, yes. so of course, hopefully we won't be replaced to by Alexa, <laughs> the Cube interviews in the future. Guys, thanks so much. 
for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. CA Technologies, Hybrid Cloud, DevOps, Monitoring, Management, all happening right here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, we'll be right back with more live coverage. You're watching theCUBE.